Hello guys, welcome back to Echelon's Hub. I'm here today to show you a Giro d'Italia route that I designed myself. If you like this content and you like this video, I would really appreciate if you would leave a like and a subscribe. It would be really helpful to my long-term goal of making live streams here on YouTube. So let's get on to it. So I use this site, which is La Flamme Rouge. It's a very useful site. It's where I go to check the profiles of every race. It's my most reliable source. And often they have contests which involve creating routes. And it can be everything it can be everything and anything pretty much i don't decide what happens here however there was a contest number five and as you can see here the goal was to build a jury d'italia there weren't big limitations there was the normal such as the race shall start in sicily and be balanced there should be a mountain finish in the first week so a pretty normal race and the only real limitation but not a limitation sort of a way to explore is that you should visit t at least 20 World Heritage Sites in Italy. I don't know the exact number, but I know that there are around 50-something of those sites in Italy. So there needed to be a big effort to make sure that I would go across them. So I designed this whole route with that in mind at all times, of course. Stage 1 was starting in Agrigento and finishing in Syracuse, both World Heritage Sites. This is a, a journey through the inland of Sicily pretty much, a big stage, 231 kilometers, very undulated with one for the sprinters. Stage 2 is a stage that I meant to make it hard, one very very good for breakaways, passing through Mount Etna very early on to the stage and having the climbs of Rocca Fjord and Casal Vecchio halfway through the stage. Ideal for raids, but as it's so early on in the race, I expect breakaways to be something that can come out from this better. Stage 3 up from Reggio Calabria to Botticello, a very undulated stage again, but one that I intend for the sprinters. A disclaimer, obviously this route is completely fictitious, it's something that I've created and maybe in some aspects it may not be the most realistic possible and of course in no way it involves finances or the will of those cities being there. It's just fiction, but I think it's pretty realistic. I made it to look as most realistic as possible so i hope that you like it at this point stage four is a time trial 38 kilometers from the city of croton to melissa it's a rather flat one with a hilly finish in there with a little hilltop to make sure that there are some small gaps in there and the climbers can get something out of this day stage five is a finish in the city of matera it's another world heritage site in here and it's one for the punchers and the punchy sprinters who can surely make it over the hills stage six is a stage from potenza to napoli there are two world heritage sites in this stage which are the intermediate sprint in pompeii and the finish in napoli itself it's a flat stage another one for for the sprinters and stage 7 follows the same shape as it goes all the way from Caserta to Roma. It is another one for the sprinters. Made the effort to make this beginning a little bit more to the sprinters as I'm the, the finale of the race is quite hard and not many opportunities for them. I like this Grand Tour format where there's a lot of focus in the sprinters in the beginning, not too much but a lot and then they let the climbers have the most attention through the halfway and the end of the race. So stage 8 is where the real mountains begin. It's a stage from Roma to Gran Sasso d'Italia. You may recognize that final climb from the 2018 Giro where Simon Yates took a big, big win. I love that place when I saw it on TV and I just thought to myself, this is an ideal place to host the stage finish. The stage is mountainous itself. It goes through the Colli de Monte Bove and the Monte Ovidoli. The stage finishes above 2000 meters over where it started and although none of the climbs are excessively hard it's a very good warm-up and it's a hard stage to set at the first gaps and see who can be in the battle for the win stage 9 is a raid stage this is one that i particularly love to make i think it's really special and i would like to see more of these stages Firstly, it's important to put always a, a, a stage that fits raving after a really hard stage. But in this particular instance, it, it felt very appropriate. Stage goes over Mount Monte Pietra and Paso Lanciano, two climbs that are very, very hard. You may remember Paso Lanciano from, I don't remember which year it was, but the stage that finished in the Muro di Guardia Grelle in Terreno Adriatico, where Alberto Contador won. He attacked on exactly on the Paso Lanciano. The, 
The, this climb is pretty much the first section of the blockhouse climb and the riders then go down for a steep finish in the streets of Chieti. The profile doesn't show it perfectly, unfortunately, but I can guarantee that I designed it for myself in two steep streets. I don't know exactly the distance, but it was gradients of around 15%. doesn't show in the profile, but I'll show you in the map here down below somewhere. Stage 10 is almost a replica of Strade Bianchi. So the first half of the stage isn't, it isn't at all, but the second one, the last 55 kilometers or something like that goes through the, well, the last 55 kilometers exactly of the Strade Bianca, going through sectors like Monte Santa Maria, uh, Le Tolf, and finishing on the Siena Historic Center on Via Santa Caterina. Stage 11 is another return for the historic part of the route, starting in Florence and finishing in Luca, passing through Pisa and San Gimitano. <laughs> My Italian is not the best, but I'm trying to make through it. It's another stage for the sprinters after some stages that they wouldn't have an opportunity. Stage 12 is mostly flat through the Po River Valley and finishing in a circuit in a very iconic climb that I personally love, which is the Basilica de San Luca. The stage finishes in Bologna in the summit of exactly one of those passages where the riders will have to go three times through it. Stage 13 is another pan flat stage, the flattest of them all. It starts in Mestre and finishes in Grado Pineta. It is a stage that also almost replicates the Adriatica Ionica stage that we've seen. I'm not sure if it was last year or two years ago. If I'm not mistaken, it was Philippe Gilbert who won on that day. I can be wrong, I can be wrong, but this stage is another trap in between the climbers. There's been several climbing stages at this point and they are above in the overall, but they have to make it through a treacherous day like the one in Siena and this one exactly that goes through several gravel sectors very exposed areas and can make for very, very tricky racing where they can lose everything or they can be raided by opponents and have a complete general classification swap even though there are no climbs at all in it. Stage 14 is the entrance in the Alps. Finally in stage 14 only it's very late in a race I would say for an ordinary Giro but I think that it fits perfectly in what I wanted to do. The stage itself is very hard. It features around 4,600 4, meters of climbing, although it doesn't look like. None of the climbs in the first half, the first section of the stage is overly hard, but then it finishes in the massive climb to Piancavallo that we've seen in the 2017 Giro, where I've actually shown a video some weeks ago about Tom Dumoulin, how he won. On this day, he lost a lot of time, but he kept his own, and this is a climb that I like. It's very hard, and it's a proper entrance to the Alps. Stage 15 is one that I love making. There are so many good climbs around the city of Feltre, and it was completely appropriate to have a stage finish in there. The stage starts in Belluno. You can see in here below, it's pretty much a loop in the city of Feltre. There's climbs like the Forcella Franche, and then this, the climb to San Martino di Castrosa, which is pretty much halfway through the massive Passovole, and then the Passo Mangian through the side that it wasn't tackled in the last year's Giro. Let me make that clear, but it's equally as hard. Maybe not as hard, but it's certainly steeper, especially near the end, with the five, final five kilometers at 10% gradient. Then a climb to Pieve Tesino and the final climb to Croce Down, which is indeed the side that was climbed in the Giro, if you've noticed last year. And a descent to Feltre after 2012 kilometers. Stage 16 is a return to the flat stages, the last chance for the sprinters to get their success. Starts in Feltre as it's finished in the previous day and goes all the way to Verona where the Giro finished last year, a very iconic city and one that the fast man will love to see. Stage 17 is an entrance to the Alps, it's uh, pretty much an introduction to what these final days are gonna be about. It's not a overly hard stage, it's built in mind to carry a breakaway win pretty much. It starts in Verona and starts climbing very quickly to Montecchio, not a hard climb but it will set up for a breakaway. And then the climb to Monte Vondone is pretty much the decisive moment of the race. And after the Monte Vondone, they go down to Trento and go all the way through the valley into Valzano for the finish. Stage 18 is the massive ride through the Dolomites. I absolutely love the Dolomites and in every Giro that I design pretty much or everything surrounding Italy, I just have to go to the Dolomites. I love that part of Italy. 
there's so many quality climbs and there's so many hard brutal climbs there's height involved and you can make stages like this which are so repetitive in number of climbs the amount of climbing is amazing we go through the climbs of Cornedo, which is not as known, but it's very hard, especially to, st to start the stage with. And then you go through a section of mythical climbs, pretty much. If you know about the Giro, you probably know about all of them. The Paso Costa Lunga, the Paso San Pellegrino, the Paso Fedaya, Paso Pordoi, and the Paso Campo Longo for a finish then in Corvara in Badia. This is where the 2016 stage that Esteban Chavez won finished. It was a, an amazing day of racing that I remember very, very well. And although I didn't include the Paso Giao, which is maybe the biggest climb in there, the most famous one, this route is absolutely amazing and I love how I made it. Stage 19 is what I would consider the queen stage. It has maybe an excess of climbing. There's 6200 meters of climbing and 259 kilometers i think i may have gone a little bit excessive in here but i still don't think that it's unrealistic i don't know if there's a rule over the limit distance in the grand tours if it does i apologize for this but i absolutely love this route that i made this stage is amazing it starts in brixen and it's a total traverse through the alps it goes up the joffen pass very early on the day and then goes up the Paso del Estel through its hardest side, the most beautiful one as well, with the big amount of air pins. That I absolutely love this imagery from there. It goes down to Bormio until Mazo di Valtellina, where the race then goes up the Paso del Mortirolo, which is another brute, brute, brute. Both of them in the same stage. The Paso del Mortirolo is almost 12 kilometers long at 11%. This is also tackled in its hardest side, the one that we've seen in 2015, for example. And I'm not sure if 2019 as well. I have the idea that it was indeed. I'll leave a confirmation here below as well. And after going down the Mortirolo, the race then goes up to Aprica. This is a finish that's very well known. It's, a, it's an ideal one for me. I really liked how I made this one. It's a perfect stage for raiding. And after three weeks of brutal racing, this is exactly what it takes to crack a big rider. And then the final mountain stage is one that goes from Sondrio to Plan di Monte Campioni. Plan di Monte Campioni is a slime that hosted a stage finish in the 2014 Giro. Personally, I don't remember that stage finish. It's with some sadness that I can say that. The stage, however, is very hard. The Paso San Marco is there with 27 kilometers in length at 6.5%. With so much climbing, brutal climbing, I almost call this stage as somewhat insignificant because all the gaps have been made. But when you really look at this, it's, it's a brutal stage on its own. And after three weeks of racing even more, there's almost 5,000 meters of climbing in here with the Paso San Marco and the Paso de Zambia halfway through the stage leading to Plan de Monte Campione, which is a brutal, brutal climb, the hardest summit finish of this race. It's almost 20 kilometers long at 7.5% and it's the final opportunity for the climbers to make their qualities show and to gain some time. As the final stage then goes from Crespidada to Milano, both World Heritage sites. It's a flat time trial reminiscent also of the 2017 Giro, which I've loved that finish. It's 37 kilometers long, it's big enough for big gaps to be made, but at this point I hope that it won't be a race decising factor, but it can indeed switch up some places. As you know, this is a fictional route, however, I love making them. I have a little hobby of making some of these and I made grand tours throughout Europe. I've participated in some of these contests, which included also Tour de France routes. Uh, a Colombian Grand Tour, a race across America, a variant for the Volta Portugal, seen through my eyes as the best possible route, and I've done some others that were just for pure enjoyment, you know, not really any specific reason, but I just like making them. So if you like this video, ask once again that you would leave a like and a subscribe to this video. I would love it and I would really be appreciated from it. I hope you've liked this one and I'll see you in the next one.